David Rachel. Hope you're doing well. Just wanted to share some thoughts with you on um, some of the things that I've been challenged by recently. Um, been listening to one of my favourite bands, Switchfoot, and really been challenged by one of the lines from their song um, called Thrive. And the line goes, um, I want to thrive, not just survive. And I think in this weird kind of COVID-19 lockdown situation, I really want to be able to say at the end of it that actually, you know what? I didn't just survive it. COVID-19, um, I thrived in it. And so kind of some of the things that I've been doing to um, help myself um, and to just thrive in this time. I wanted to share some thoughts on it. John 10, 10 says, the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. Jesus came to the earth so that we might have life and life to the full. We can rest and know that Jesus actually is our good shepherd and that he's going to lead us into places um, that he, we, he's going to look after us. And although it seems stuff seems uncertain, um, we can put our hope and trust in Jesus and know that he's going to kind of come through in some way. And that doesn't mean that bad things aren't going to happen, but it's actually trusting and hoping in him. A bit like what Megan was talking about in one of our videos like a few weeks ago. Jesus came to the earth as the ultimate kind of showing of love. Like Ewan was saying in the previous video. Verse 11, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Actually, we remember that this weekend that Jesus came and died on Good Friday and was raised again to life on Easter Sunday. And how amazing that is. I love um, the Passion Translation of uh, John 10, verse 11. Um, but I have come to give you everything in abundance, more than you expect. Life in the fullness until you overflow. I am the good shepherd who lays down my life as a sacrifice for the sheep. Life in its fullness until you're overflowing. It's that kind of life that we're called to. Is that kind of life with Jesus. So actually, it's not just surviving and getting through life. It's thriving. It's having life to overflowing. I find that really challenging. I don't know about you. But you may be saying, Sam, that's all well and good, knowing that Jesus can have hope and stuff. But what does that practically mean? What does it look like to thrive? And that's a very good question. I think I'm still working it out, but there are four things that have really been helping me. Firstly, um, reading and telling stories and watching stories. So I love watching films. Um, and then second, routine, um, having disciplines within my life. Um, so being disciplined in doing stuff, um, spending time with God, number three, and number four is remembering that God is always with me and Jesus is always there. And kind of um, along the lines of practicing the presence of God. So in each day, I'm gonna, I'm, in this video, I'm going to unpack all these four things. So number one, um, reading and uh, telling stories and watching stories. I think story is one of the most important things um, that we have to offer. Um, as human beings. Um, I think it's one of the things that brings people life. It brings people um, closer together. It helps you get to know somebody. Um, one of the uh, things that I love is I love watching films. I think one of the main reasons that um, Jesus spoke in parables um, and story was because it's so powerful. You can captivate an audience with a story. You can um, explain to them things that they don't understand. You can help them to think outside of their own box by telling them a story and tell them a parable that actually only some of them can understand. I want to tell you a quick story. During the time of Jesus, there was a custom um, and during a meal, if the master of the meal, um, a way that he would communicate with his um, servants, that was a non-verbal way, 
um, involved a face cloth so or his napkin that actually when he had finished with his meal if he was done he would just chuck it down and kind of leave it strewn along his place and it was a sign for him to tell the servants I'm, I'm finished with my meal I'm not coming back please can you kind of come in and kind of clean my place if though the master of the banquet um, was to use get his face cloth and to fold it neatly and leave it in his place it would then be a sign that to the servants the master isn't finished he's gone away but he's coming back because he's not quite done yet so we fast forward to John uh, 20 verse 3 to 8 it says both of them were running together but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first and stooped to look in he saw the linen cloth lying there and the face cloth which had been on Jesus' face not lying with the other linen cloth but folded in a place by itself then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and saw and believed i love that this story just highlights again that actually Jesus, even though he wasn't there, he left a sign for the disciples and John picks up on it. I love this story because it highlights both how much Jesus cared that he folded the grave clothes that was on his face as a sign to the disciples to say, by the way, guys, I'm not finished yet. I'm going to be back. But it also tells you a bit about John. It tells you that he's really competitive and that he on more than one occasion in this passage says, by the way, Peter, I, I beat you to the grave. I was faster. I, I know a few people who are quite competitive like that. But story is so important. Number two is routine. One of the things that um, I found really helpful over the last few days has been to have, uh, to wake up at the same time, to go to bed at roughly the same time, um, to have a good breakfast, to have a shower, get up, um, get into actual clothes um, rather than staying in kind of pajamas all day um, and just kind of having a good routine um, and it's been really good for my mental health and sometimes I, I have to change it up so at the weekends I'll sleep in a little bit later and just change it up because for me um, changing my routine is sometimes uh, it feels like a bit of a treat. One of the things that I'm trying to kind of build into my routine is having time with God and I was challenged recently um, by a friend who, um, with his time with God, um, he only does a, a certain routine or kind of discipline um, in a certain way for a certain time um, he, until uh, he can do something and it just feels like he can do it mindlessly without really thinking about it. At that point, he'll change his routine. I found that really challenging. So. Uh, what are the ways that actually with God that you have got into a routine of doing something that actually you now feel like you don't really engage with it or kind of um, you're, you can do it almost mindlessly. So routine, it's something I'm still working on. I still quite haven't found that balance, um, but it's something that is really helping me to just kind of um, yeah, take it a day at a time um, and work through it. Thirdly, um, spending time with God through worship, through times of prayer, through tuning in with services online. Um, one of the things that I did the other day, which just felt really nice, was to just take a camping mat and um, just go and sit outside and just listen to the birds and um, just think about how awesome creation is. Um, so, yeah, kind of spending time with God, getting to know him, reading the Bible, and just having those times where you're kind of pausing, you're slowing down to actually go, OK, God, where, where are you in this? And lastly, number four is um, remembering that Jesus um, is always with you. And this can be kind of through practicing the presence, um, like Brother Lawrence um, talks about. It's one of my um, favourite books, just talking about. How do we go through our day to day life, acknowledging and praising and worshipping God in just even the small things? Um, 
one of my favorite books is uh, Horse and His Boy by C.S. Lewis. And I love throughout this story, um, as Shasta, the main character, goes on um, adventures with his talking horse, um, there's a lion uh, or a cat or something along the way that helps them get to their destination. Um, and then there's this lovely bit at the end where Aslan, um, who um, C.S. Lewis likes to represent Jesus within the stories, um, he says, uh, I was the lion that forced you to join with Aravis. She's another one of the characters. Um, I was the cat that comforted you among the um, houses of the dead. I was the lion that, that drove the jackals away from you for a while while you slept. I was the lion that gave the horses uh, the new strength of fear for the last mile so that you got to um, reach King Loon in time. And I was the lion you do not remember who pushed the boat in which you lay, a child near death, so that it came to shore where a man sat wakefully at midnight to receive you. This idea that kind of with hindsight, we can look back and see that actually Jesus has been with us the whole way. So my challenge to you guys is what kind of uh, four steps, like the four steps I've shared today, they might be the same ones. What are the four steps that you're gonna kind of think about and um, look at to help you kind of thrive and not just survive in this uh, physical isolation period? So, be good to one another, stay connected, and we'll see you on the other side.